Heather, thank you. Not surprising as this becomes more of a reality, schools are going to have to pivot and, and probably reverse course from their initial stance. Listen, David, everything usually, most everything has pros and cons. Let's start with the glass half full and the pros of the SEC in terms of Texas and Oklahoma joining. Well, if I'm the SEC, I, I expanded my market more, um, bringing in Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma more. Um, obviously, I added a brand with Oklahoma and Texas. I added more good quality football. Um, you know, most of the time, a lot of times you expand for regions because you want to, you know, grow your region and grow your TV with your money. Not only did you get two name brands, you got one football team that's been great, one of the best football teams in the country the last you know, five or six years, and another team that's one of the biggest brands in college football. So the rich get richer. By the way, we get more games that are going to be really fun to watch. I mean, you, you, you bring in Texas and A&M, you get that rivalry back. You're going to see what? Texas versus Georgia more, Alabama versus Oklahoma more. Like, so as a fan, you're going to get more quality football, I think, that you're really, really going to love. So that's the pros. David, I, I think I heard you say money and power and money and power because I mean, that's really where it begins. <laughs> More <know>? money. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about, yeah, kind of world domination, no, sports world domination for, you know, the SEC. Now, now for the players, I mean, I think the benefit to them is that you will see, let's take the playoff, for example, the SEC is likely to get five or six spots once we expand to 12 playoffs. Now, and it's not just football. Think about the non-revenue sports. There's been a lot of discussion about how the non-revenue sports have been kind of shorted on scholarships for the longest and that most commissioners would like to see more full scholarships in non-revenue sports. All this money and the power will allow the SEC to push for changes with non-revenue sports. And don't forget that Texas won the Director's Cup this past year as the best overall program, which includes all the non-revenue sports, by the way. It sounds good, doesn't it? Oh yeah, there we go. Let's let's give it let's give it to the have-nots. Now listen, uh, that remains to be seen. You certainly hope so. But the flip side of this, and you talked about the money, you talked about the power, having it consolidated, theoretically anyway, uh, almost all in one pledge draw, uh, brings some negative as well. Tell me about the cons. Oh wow, where where do I start with my list? Um, first and foremost, <laughs> you know, you're wiping out the Big 12 Conference, you know, and, and you're hurting a bunch yep. of other programs in the Big 12 that are going to have a hard time recovering. And, you know, the collegiality there is, is missing because this is going to be devastating for a lot of programs. And, and then, you know, for me, I loved watching, you know, the battle for Texas, you know, Texas playing TCU and Texas Tech and Baylor. These regional rivalries have always been exciting and people grew up on them. They're going away. And that's a negative in my, in my view. We are losing some of the, the fabric, some of the nostalgia of college football when we wipe away those things. And then finally, David, I, I would say, let, let's not get too excited about the schedule and some of the things that you mentioned, because keep in mind, Texas A&M, they made this move in 2012. They played Georgia once in that 10-year period. It's hard to get the scheduling right when you have that many teams you know, trying to get everybody right. It's going to be tough for folks to get the games that they want. No, no doubt. And obviously A&M being in the West, Georgia in the East, the crossover is not going to, you know, be as frequent. But, you know, you will have other teams that will also match up in the West with them consistently, which will be a lot of fun. So the carnage is one, Rod, no doubt. All the teams left over from the, from the Big 12 that are kind of stuck there. The power that the SEC will have, I mean – you know, the NCAA is not going to be around for too much longer, I don't think. You know, they're continuing to lose their foothold now. You look at the SEC with all the schools they have and the spreading out and the money they're making, obviously a huge amount of power. Another con, too, if I'm Missouri and a and it's kind of a negative for me, right? Like, I moved a couple years yep. ago. Like, I used to live in your neighborhood, Oklahoma and Texas, and I got tired of y'all. Y'all yep. were annoying neighbors. And I wanted to get the heck out of Dodge. And I went and I bought a bigger mansion in a bigger neighborhood, a better neighborhood, got a gate on that thing. And then guess what? Dad and here you they come. Didn't come here they in come. my hood and here build a come. bigger house and now to come steal all the attention. So I think AM in Missouri obviously won't be won't be super ecstatic with it either. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.